can Lyme disease cause connective tissue disorders? If so, what are some examples? How does that look? You know, I, <laughs> it's a big whenever topic you, I know. <laughs> whenever you look at chronic illness, any kind of chronic illness, you're talking about cellular dysfunction. So everything that happens in the body is a result of cells. We have over 200 different types of cells in the body. So there are certainly cells that maintain our cartilage and our joints and, and ligaments. Um, and those cells are can be affected by a variety of different microbes. So Borrelia is one of many that can affect joints. Um, mycoplasmas have been closely aside, uh, tied to both rheumatoid and osteoarthritis. Lupus, which is typically associated with arthritis, has been associated with P. acnes, mycoplasmas, other microbes. So no matter what you're talking about, if you look at the fundamental processes of what is going on, I don't think you can explain these illnesses without considering the possibility of some intracellular microbe at play. And not necessarily one microbe, but it could be a variety of different microbes. Different microbes, different bacteria, different viruses prefer different types of cells in the body. So Borrelia, Mycoplasma, like cells that are uh, producing collagen or collagen producing uh, collagen rich areas in the body. So they're going to be invading. Like I said, that little corkscrew is designed to bore right into cartilage. So we have, so yes, there's definitely association. I don't think you can explain any of these things without considering the possibility of an intracellular microbe presence.